Hello, hello my crafty friend. We are back with more Cricut Design Space tutorials. Our tutorials that's based on our best-selling book, which is the Cricut Design Space tutorial style book where you can find all of these tutorials in beautiful written and screenshot step-by-steps. So have a look in the description below for this link, but for today, let's jump straight into this video. Hi, today we've got a really cool video tutorial. It's one of my favorite things is making a split monogram. I think they look so elegant and so classy and it's got quite a few steps involved in making. So we're going to use quite a few things that we've actually learned in some of the previous videos if you've been watching them one by one, but I will go through them um, fairly slowly so that you can follow along if you haven't managed to watch the other ones yet. So first of all, we obviously need a letter. So I'm just going to grab the letter M here as my letter that I want to use. Next up, what we want to find is a really nice, bold, even font. So if I split this up into two, it might be really hard to read what exactly that letter is because it's already pretty hard to read the way that it is. So I want to find a font that is nice and bold. Now I've already had a search around and if you're following along on um, in the complete guide to Cricut Design Space, our book that is so super popular, we're on page 67 there and you can see where I'm heading. So what is it, what I'm actually going to be creating. So number one, let's find a font. So I'm going to go with Superstar, Superstar font and grab that one. There we go. So as you can see, I now have a really bold font. So if I cut a bit out of this font, everybody will still be able to understand exactly what's going on here. And now what we want to do is to actually create this empty space to create a split monogram. To do that, we're going to go to shapes and we're going to grab a square. And now we want to change the square into a rectangle. To do that, we need to unlock the shape because currently if we resize it, it's going to stay a square. So unlock this so that we have the ability to drag it however which way we want to. Awesome. So now I can drag it long and I can find a space to pop it. So where do we want to split this M? I think pretty much there would be good. Yeah, I like it here. Great. So now you need to grab both of those. So I like to click and drag a box around both and you're going to click slice. So remember slice is like slicing a loaf of bread. If you just want one slice of bread, you have to slice it, right? You do the same thing here. If I want to slice a piece out of the M in order to be able to take that piece away, I need to use a slice function. To me, that's the easiest way of remembering it. So hopefully that helps you. So I'm clicking on slice and now you're going to see that I'm going to have some extra pieces. So as we do with slicing a loaf of bread, we end up with a single slice. That's my single slice that I sliced out of the M. Now I don't want that. So I'm going to chuck that away and then I can take this out. I don't want that either. I'm going to tuck that away and I don't even want that one. So I'm going to throw that away too. So here we have our split monogram, our M, that we can write in now. But before I write something in here, I like to create a little bit of a border because it just looks a little bit incomplete and unfinished. So I'm going to go back here to shapes and grab the square again. And this time around, I'm going to make a very thin line out of it. So unlock the shape again and we want to create a really thin border and I like to have my border extend longer than my letter um, over the edges. So as you can see, it's just going a bit longer than the letter. I think it just creates a bit more of a bordered shape. Now, before I settle on what I want that to be, what I want to do is put my name in here so that I can make sure that my border is going to be long enough. So I'm going to go back to text and I'm going to pop in Matthews. Cool. And now I want to change that font. I'm going to change it to varsity letters. 
Now, obviously, if you're doing this from scratch, it might take a bit of effort and time playing around with the fonts and finding fonts that work together really well and that suit each other. Or you can just use this font pairing that I've already settled on. Um, but I didn't want to go and research the fonts with you because it really can be a little bit of a time consuming process. Now, I want to make this one a bold just so that it's a bit more heavy. That's much better. Great. Now, some of these letters are not exactly close enough together for my liking. So let me just take this out. Actually, let me hide these away for a minute. Oops, I hid the wrong one away, didn't I? See how some of my letters here are a bit closer together and others are not? So it just doesn't look very tidy. Like this A and this T is really a bit far away, but I like the spacing between the T and the, e, and the H and the E. So we can fix up that letter spacing before we drop it into our split monogram. You can play with letter spacing here to reduce down the overall spacing and get most of the letters to a space that you like. So I like the collection of letters here. I think I'm just unhappy mostly with the A and the T. So now I need to ungroup my letters. Click on ungroup here. And now I can move the letters around individually. So we have a full tutorial on how to fix a letter and line spacing if you need something that goes a bit slower than this. Um, it's there for you. So I'm going to grab two of these letters and I'm just going to move them slightly closer together. I'm just using the arrow keys on my keyboard. And I think that looks much better. I know it can be a bit more perfect potentially, but I think that's good enough for me. So now I'm going to grab all of my letters and I'm going to wow them together so that they become one single image. So you'll see if you watch these layers here, it's going to all meld into one single layer. And now we have just one layer for our letters. So I'm going to bring these back. And now I need to figure out how long I want that line to be. What do you reckon? That looks pretty good, I reckon. I'm going to go a tiny bit smaller. I think if I go smaller, I'm going to have too much white space on the edges. Okay, so I think I like the look of that. So now I need to go back to this and we want to make it just a bit longer because I want it to extend to the same sort of a length as the word. So let me reposition this and a bit longer again. We have a look what that looks like. I think it's longer on the one side than the other side. Not bad. All right, so I'm going to grab both of these. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that this single line is aligned in the middle, that it's center aligned, so that we know that it's the same length on both sides of the monogram. So I'm going to go to a line here so that we can center that line horizontally. There we go. So the M moved. I don't know if you saw that. Have a look at the M. So the M moved slightly, so my eyeball in the line was out. So luckily I did actually go and align it. And now what I'm going to do is to grab this line and duplicate it because I need another one down here. So rather than recreating it from scratch, I'm clicking on that layer and I'm just going to click on duplicate to make a copy. And now I can just pop that one down here and great. And I'm going to grab my three elements and just align them again to make sure it's all even. So align and I'm going to go center horizontally. Beautiful. The tiniest little movement that happened there. I'm going to make this slightly smaller. Great. That all looks really cool. Let me just check the alignment again. Yeah, that looks good. All right, beautiful. So now we just need to do the finishing touches of our beautiful monogram. So you can play with colors if you want to at this point. Um, and then we just need to glue all of our pieces together as well. So let's see. How is this going to look cool? I think I like that. And I'm going to change this as well. And I'm going to change that one as well. That looks so cool, right? 
Okay, so now we need to actually glue this line to the letter because currently all of these pieces are loose pieces, which means that when I go to make it, it's all going to get scrambled up. So I have now got two lines coming up on the side rather than in my monogram, which is not what I want. So I'm going to click on the line and the monogram and the other line. So I'm selecting everything except for the word. I don't want that, right? So you can hide that away, select the rest of it. And what we want to do is glue the pieces together to get rid of some of these excess cutting lines because right now your machine will be cut in here where this black line runs. So it's going to cut there and we really don't need it to cut there. So to remove that cutting line, I'm going to click on weld and you watch the line to see what happens. So weld and see how it's removed that cut line to tell the Cricut machine that we don't want you to cut there. So that's what welding does. Welding glues things together to remove extra lines that we don't need. So if I zoom back out now, we now have one single design. You can see here it's one layer. If we go to make it, you've got the whole thing is built and made up. Those two lines haven't moved. So that is what welding does. And now we can pop that back and ta -da! we have a really super cool um, split monogram that we can cut away and pop on something like a jersey or a sweater or a bag of some sort. All right. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. That was page 67 of the Cricut Design Space book. So if in future you need to know what fonts I used because you would like to use similar fonts, it's there for you in the, bl in the blue box. All the information about the fonts that we've used is ready for you to go. Next up, we're going to have a look at a knockout text. So I will see you soon. Bye for now.